influentially put a number on it, how many people were talking about the styles of wine you guys were when you found each other in the country? Well, look, this was a this was at the genesis, I think, of the movement in Australia that coincided with not just Georgia and I meeting each other and a few other sommeliers who were interested and the sort of beginning of some independent importers who had been sommeliers before, but also where the natural selection theory group was beginning to find their, their kind of heat, which was Tom Schrobrook, Anton Van Klopper, James Erskine and Sam Hughes. Yep. And Sam Hughes was working for an importer and also a bottle shop um, in Sydney. Sam, I think, uh, Sam Hughes, and many people won't know his name, but there's a picture of him above We can all pour some wine out for Sam, though. Okay, great. So there's a picture of Sam Hughes above the fridge in PNV Wine Liquor Merchants in Newtown for a reason, because I think he was probably the most seismic f- figure of the natural wine movement in Australia and that he introduced to a lot of people the culture of natural wine in a very different way that Georgia and I perhaps did. Um, he was a bon vivant and a raconteur and a you know, a poet, an artist, a musician and created these incredible sort of cultures around his activities and he drew in Tom and Anton and James and showed them some really amazing natural wines that basically kicked off their careers as the kind of godfathers of Australian natural wine. So all this was happening at kind of the same time. And while George and I were fiddling around in Europe, these guys were on grassroots in Sydney. Making wine. Making wine in a warehouse in Roselle, using ceramic eggs and playing music to the wines and creating art around it and all this sort of stuff, records, these sorts of things. And it was this incredible period of time where there was, so, there was a lot of energy. And I remember very fondly, and we actually used Vinnie as the home base for it, but probably about a year or two later, Giorgio and I had sat down. As, uh, we, we would meet weekly, if not three times a week in one to one BC at various times. I'd drop down, I was... I had a little office up the road. Be- before you hate me, apparently. Yeah, exactly. I hate you now. So yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But look, you know, Rootstock <laughs> did bring out a lot of emotion. We can talk about it in a second. But um, it's Love definitely it. not the case right now. There's a lot of love between us two. Yeah, <laughs> literally. You can, te- you can tell. It's fucking, Friend- it's fucking Friendship great. breeds hate. Yeah. yeah. But it's well, got to. Through this period, it was quite, you know, it was a simmering pot. And Georgia and I were talking to a bunch of people around Sydney saying, we need to do a festival. We need to do a festival. We're talking about marquees and tents and food and chefs and authors and artists and architects and all this sort of stuff. We're like, we're going to put something together. We're going to put something together. And we sat down at Vinnie one day with about 20 people and Georgia and I brought them all together into a room and we talked to them all and said, look, who's in for this? We're going to do a natural wine festival but with food and with chefs and stuff. And out of that 20, about five kept with the program. That was me, Giorgio, James Hurd, Matt Young from Black Market Sake and his partner in Black Market Sake, Linda Wiss. And the five of us decided we would actually put this into play. And that was an amazing thing because we'd seen little flickers of this over in Europe of natural wine festivals, but we never wanted ours to be like 